Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Together, a very special and first ever Read Global virtual event. My name is Eva Saha, and while my business card says I'm a professional host and moderator, and I will be playing that role this evening, I'm really here as a passionate supporter of Read. And why? Because I am a living example of what happens when a woman is empowered. My mother was born of an illiterate woman who was forced into marriage at the age of 13 and had her first child, my mother, at age 17. And through some miracle of wisdom beyond her years, my mother had the audacity to fight her circumstances and her family's wishes to leave her country and live in much less than desirable conditions, all to pursue an education to escape the circumstances into which she was born and might otherwise ultimately have been limited by. By her own perseverance and many twists of fate and good fortune, she ultimately became a medical doctor, the first female doctor to come out of her small town of Sherpur, Bangladesh. And maybe more importantly, her story is anecdotal of what research has borne out, that women who are empowered with the gift of education and opportunity spread that gift to their families and communities, inexorably changing the lives of generations to come and positively affecting the global economy. And I don't tell you this story to glorify my mother, although she was an amazing woman. I tell you this because my mother's story was a one in a million type of story in that day and age. But thanks to Read Global, one doesn't have to wish upon a star for various twists of fate and good fortune to achieve these types of goals. Because of Read Global, women in India, Nepal, and Bhutan can all have the opportunity to escape the situations into which they were born. And I just want to take this moment to thank all of you for having the compassion and the understanding that your continued support of Read is quite literally changing the world for the better. So honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce the new director of Read Global. Sanjana Shrestha joined Read Nepal as program officer in June 2004. Undertaking different positions thereafter, she served as country director from January 2009 through February 2018. So during her tenure, she was able to take Read Nepal into new heights and identify different ideas on how community-led development can be practiced and adapted into different contexts. Sanjana's expertise and facilitation skills have been critical in expanding the Read model to India and Bhutan. She served as Senior Program Specialist for Read Global from March 2018 to November 2019, providing strategic program design guidance to Read's overall replication, strategic program design support, and scaling efforts. Since December 2019, she has held the position of CEO of Read Nepal and has provided strategic direction towards organizational growth and sustainability. Well, Sanjana's diverse background encompasses community-based development work with different NGOs. She's also undertaken numerous research projects related to community development in national and international NGOs in Nepal. She also served as an advisor for the Access to Learning Award Submission, a Global Libraries Initiative Awards program of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Sanjana's experience gives her unique insights into working with communities to create local leadership capacity in order to achieve need-based development goals. She holds bachelor's and master's degrees in humanities and social science from Trivivan University in Kathmandu. And she's even currently pursuing her PhD in social work from the University of Queensland in Australia. Yes, she is a fabulous woman and it is my privilege and honor to welcome to the virtual stage, the new director of Read Global, Sanjana Shrestha. Sanjana, it is so wonderful to see you, hello. Hello, Eva. Well, we are so excited to have you here. We couldn't be more thrilled that you are gonna take Read Global into new heights. Welcome, and we are so excited to see you. Thank you, Eva. So, Sanjana, can you tell us a little bit about why you've become so invested in Reed's work? Eva, thank you very much for hosting this event voluntarily. And I would like to hurriedly welcome everyone to this event. So, before I joined Read Nepal, I was working for women empowerment with other organizations, but the project was coming to an end, so I was looking for the job. I got invited to join Read, but at that time I thought that we just built libraries, so I was reluctant to join, but I had to take this job because I need job at that time. So as I began to understand Read, I came to realize that community libraries are excellent resources, not only for the women, but also for men, children, and elderly. 
when I visited communities, I was so moved to hear women saying to come to the library, I do not need to take permission of my husband. In Nepal, women have to take permission with male members whenever she wants to do something. For example, before marriage, she needs to ask father, I did. After marriage with husband, in-laws, and in old age with son. So community libraries are culturally accepted and seen as temples in South Asia. They are known as what we call in Nepali, Saraswati Mandir, a temple of learning, where no bad things can happen, no sins can take place, and everyone can go there. Collaboration at all levels of community is critical if we want to enable women and all villages to live sustainable lives. Read library and resource centers provide safe space for everyone, make communities voice count and inspire community action to identify local problems and find solutions. Essentially, read centers provide enabling environment to community to manage their own development. And I also hear like women in read centers explain, library is like my parents' home. There are no obligations to fulfill. Like in my parents' home, I am free to do whatever I like. So being a Pali daughter-in-law, I totally relate to what women say. In our in-laws' home, we have rules to follow, even we like it or not. Like, you know, waking up early as five o'clock, sweep the floor, make tea, boil your head to your elders. After everyone, you know, is done, like after serving everyone, does your turn come. The list goes on and on and on, and you can do this and you cannot do that. So, you know, um, when I want to sleep in, till late in the morning, or if I want to spend my day, you know, doing whatever I want to do, I fled to my parents' home. So you can imagine when, what it means when women say that library is like their parents' home. And I also hear like communities saying, when we do not find our kids at home, we are all sure that they are reading and playing games or using internet in the library. Once I was in the library, um, Eva, and then I saw grandparents teaching teenagers how to make the traditional handheld drum to produce the music. And, you know, the libraries also run the project like Grandparents Stories and a Picture Project where grandparents tell stories and kids illustrate. It's a perfect example of intergenerational learning. So, you know, you can see it's a place for women, it's a place for kids, old age, youth and everyone. So all these cases made me believe that libraries have potential to change lives of everyone in the society. That's why I'm invested. With COVID, I'm stuck and very much missing going to the library side hearing and I mean, seeing wonderful things. So, so the situation is different now. Working for Reed give me, I mean, it, it gives me so much joy. I can see joy and smiles in the faces of so many people we are working with. And I'm very happy to be the part of it. Oh, I know. It's such a wonderful place of respite. And like you said, a place for people to connect that intergenerational learning is just so wonderful. Um, and so I hear you. It, it's kind of funny because in this country, sometimes our kids are forced to go to the libraries. And in these different parts of the world, it is it's truly an honor to be able to go. Yeah. And, and I know what you're talking about. That's so wonderful. Thanks for those stories. Sanjana, for those who aren't as familiar with Reed's work, tell us about its mission and what Reed does. Um, Reed envisions a world where individuals, families, and entire communities have access to knowledge, resources, and opportunities necessary to shape their own prosperous futures and build cohesive, resilient, and inclusive societies. A world where person's sex, class, or caste doesn't affect their opportunities in life. REIT facilitates the creation of community-owned and led library resource centers and revenue-generating businesses as catalyst for unlocking community programmatic, social, and economic potential. The community libraries have relevant need-based resources like books, computer, internet, material for kids. Um, community libraries conduct programs that cater to specific need of the community on education, livelihood, and technology. Finally, we also seeds business to sustain and support the center so that they are true economic and social assets to the communities, but not the liabilities. So I think what is so remarkable about Reed and why it has been so successful is because of how Reed engages the community, thereby ensuring the long-term success of these centers of hope, and that's really what they are. Sajana, I would love for you to tell us a little bit more about that. Um, I love my work and feel very fortunate to be the part of Reed because Reed, you know, I'm able to contribute to many communities in a truly meaningful way. Uh, Reed values the voices of grassroots communities, the concern of the villages, believe in people's own potential. And here I experience and witness that people themselves are the architecture of their own future. 
really it's not about telling community what to do, but learning how we as development workers should work with them. The model is actually the compilation of what communities have taught us over more than 30 years. For example, our Tony, um, the founder, was inspired by the wish, simple wish of Nepali guy to establish a library in, in his village. Back in 1991, we just built a library with some books and seeded a sustaining business. Unlike other developed countries, Nepal doesn't provide government support to operate a library. As such, a business is, was necessary to enable the community to generate income to support library operations. Businesses include such, such as like storefront rentals, training hall, uh, catering businesses, etc. And that generates income to meet the basic operation cost of the library. So in the beginning, library was not of much use. They were like, um, you know, very less um, reading habit and low literacy level, but it, it was just serving the uh, students. Then the local leaders started thinking about how to involve, how to attract more villages in the library. And they have come up with the idea of setting up a children's section. And the children started coming in and with the children, the mother started coming in and the mothers wanted to do something for themselves and created their own women's section. Thus, you know, learning from community, read centers provide different resources and services for different people. Section for everyone, check some for children, women, youth, artificial sections, and range of programs as well as businesses. As you can see here, community engagement and ownership is key. So when we ask our communities, the definition of library is, is different than usual. They call like, library is our solution center. Whenever I have problem, I go to the library. Library is my, like my second home. It's learning and meeting center. Women say it's a safe space. It's like my parents' home. And kids say it's a place where I enjoy learning. So to create the community library it facilitates the process. It's not rebuild really the library for them, but we play the role as a facilitator. It's like playing the role of midwife, helping the mother to give birth to the baby. And then after the inauguration of the center, the communities are the ones who comes up with ideas and we nurtures the grassroots innovations. So when I go to one of the community, um, you know, I don't know whether they are complimenting me or not, but what I heard is like, they told me that we did nothing, we did all by ourselves. So oh. this is how success would look like to us. They can take and ownership, that, I love that, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing I want to tell is we get so much energy from each other, even in bad times, going to see what is happening in our communities motivates and energizes me. You know, when there was earthquake back in um, 2015, April 25th, we were badly affected. The quake was about 7.8 Richter scale, and then it killed um, about more than 9,000 people and injured 22,000 people. Hundreds of thousands of Nepalese were left homeless and entire villages were flattened. So with my asthmatic daughter in tow, I was searching for the best place to stay as there were like many aftershocks, no electricity, no connectivity. We were so worried. And we were also worried about our centers at the library. I was like worried whether library were libraries are still standing and if the villages were hurt, if, if the visitors were hurt. So miraculously, what we learned is that library started delivering services three hours after the earthquake. Wow. Library premises open at charging stations, relief distribution, etc. You know, after three days, we went to um, a place called Nuakot, where our library is. It's a place called Nuakot, and in Kumari, is a particular village where about 98% of the houses were collapsed. The local people told us that after they have seen their houses collapse, they ran to the library to see if the building was still standing. Sadly, the library was badly damaged. Not only were the people who were worried about like rebuilding their home, but felt that rebuilding the library was equally important. In 13 days, the people built library. It's a temporary library, sorry. That serve community and the local government could operate and coordinate relief there. There was no government office in that particular location. So library is a place where you know, they, can, they can use that space to do their um, relief efforts. It is so wonderful. Just like you said, it became a home away from home and a true like resource center for everybody. And, and as we had talked about, the investment that everybody is able to give to the read centers is what basically attached everyone to it and, and made them continue to be invested, which shows that these things will sustain themselves in the long term, which is exactly. just a fantastic model. Yeah, yeah.
So I know that Reed's efforts have had a tremendous impact, um, like you just mentioned, and I would love for you to relay just a few more examples of the impact that you have been witness to. Mm -hmm. Well, whenever, you know, I go to the communities, I'm surprised by so many inspiring stories on the ground. And, you know, I, I, I love to hear what the communities did and they are planning to do. I have to tell you, like just two days before Asmita, uh, she's a youth leader from one of the community library, the Vijayati library. I, I, I'm sure that she's also listening to this um, uh, today. So she sent me the message and the picture saying that they celebrated, the youth group celebrated 10th birthday of a girl in the library who never have celebrated birthday in her life. I call her and thank her for her wonderful work. And then she told me another story. She mentioned that, you know, she met a girl who was like crying and she asked why was she crying? She said that she was not sure and Osmida found that she has a period. Osmida handed over a sanitary pad to her and then she doesn't know how to use that. And at that time, the youth girls, you know, they come together and then they develop a program on menstrual hygiene in the library. And they have been conducting the program for the girls. You know, it's a four hour long um, training for the girls to, to know about this menstrual hygiene in the library. So it, she also sent me the picture, one of the pictures, you can see that on the side. Mm. So these are kind of inspirations we are having and it's, it's ongoing. Uh, the story of Chuna is, is popular. She is, she married young, she got literate at the age of 40s. She's now literate, she's still going to school. She's encouraging a lot of women to read and write. She says it's never too late to learn. You might also have seen the video of her, which tells story about her journey towards literacy. She used to come to the nearby library by bicycle, which would take about an hour. Now she's able to set up the library in her own village with the support of Reed, and she is now the leader of that library. She's and now. This is a woman who actually was 44 when she began to. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She is now the leader, and she is now advocate for the women. Advocate for the women of her community, and she, with the local team, have been managing resources through partnerships, local partnerships, so that the women can be educated. Um, they can have training, seek opportunities, on and be independent. She is now the role model for lots of organizations and people. Oh, yeah, and I want to tell you the story about Tenjin uh, from Bhutan. She married young at the age of 15. She's the mother of two. She dropped school because of the financial constraint. She, she got married and she you know, was dependent on her husband. She said she had a very low self-esteem and hardly make new friends because she doesn't have that kind of confidence. And she felt sad that she's not being able to financially support her family like other educated women. She heard about Changjiji Center in Bhutan. She went there, she made friends, built confidence, she learned skills. She is now the entrepreneur. She is earning her own you know, money. She became leaders motivating other women. She learned baking, weaving, baskets um, and bags, knead felting and sewing in Changjiji Center. She has now been hired as a trainer, to be a trainer in Thimpu. Now she owns business, and she is a leader in center management, as a center management committee um, in Changjiji Center. Yeah, and the other one, uh, you know, once I was walking by the library and met a woman, um, she said that she is from the Dalit community, so-called untouchable group of people. I asked, like, do you go to the library? And she said, yes. Now I asked, you know, what do you like about it? She told, now people are buying milk from my house. Before, they do not even touch us and as accepting like food or anything from us is far off thing. She said, I'm very happy that I'm being able to earn first time in my life by selling milk. And I'm thankful that I'm valued by community now. So you're really creating positive cultural shifts that are changing people's lives. Exactly. Amazing. Yeah. And because of library's effort in, on social inclusion, we can hear many stories like this on the ground. So these are the kind of impacts um, we have seen on literacy, um, livelihood, leadership, women development. We have reached about 2.52 million people. We have served 421 villagers. We have built 112 centers across South Asia with 185 sustaining enterprises launched to meet 
the operation costs of the centers. And uh, we also have recently published our decade impact report, and there you can see our impact created in 10 years. I really request you to go through that report. Oh, yes. Great. Thank you for providing that. So I love to hear all these stories, and it's, it's amazing the impact that Reed has made. There's always been a need, but right now, it's an especially difficult time. There is such an increased urgency in terms of providing services to your communities because of the COVID crisis. Tell us about how COVID is really challenging people in a way that has just never been seen before. Yeah, as soon as COVID hit, our local network on the ground did quick survey. We reached more than uh, 22,000 people, especially from the marginalized communities and also have collected personal stories. We are still collecting the personal stories. As expected, you know, the pandemic is hitting vulnerable communities hardest, including young people, women, children, people with disabilities and low income households. We found that lives and livelihood of the people are disrupted. People are losing jobs. Those who are relying on daily wage labor, we found that 95% of them have lost their job and have no source of income. For example, people are sleeping with empty stomach or just having soup of flour flour and water, we call it kole in Nepali. They are taking loan in a very high interest rate with the local merchants. You know, the interest rate is about like 36% minimum to of 60%. They are worried that they will not be able to send their kids back to school because they will not be able to afford. Everyone in the household should work and pay back the loan. Because of the lockdown, people cannot travel. They are not getting access to health service for regular checkups, for immunization of the kids, checkup of pregnant women not being possible. The people who have chronic illness are not being able to get medicines on time. So there are a lot of challenges. Um, access to education is a challenge. People do not have access to computer and internet. Though some of the you know, schools are conducting online classes, those kids at home, the parents in rural are not in position to help them because either they are illiterate or they have difficulties um, guiding the children with the curriculum. For us, you know, they, we have internet. We are uh, using it, you know, to, to get connected, to talk to friends. But you know, in the rural villages, there are like a lot of people who do not have access to internet. And what we also found that people are not much aware about COVID. Like everywhere else, there is health impact of infection and spread. There are safety protocols from the state, but on the ground, there is inadequate information and misinformation that is aggravating people's stress and fear. Our data revealed that one in three persons with disabilities, they do not have access to information on COVID. More than 33% of respondents do not, do not have access to self hygiene necessary to protect against COVID. And, you know, I also have recently here um, the news that Domestic violence, as we know, domestic violence is the most common form of violence in Nepal. I have recently read that um, you know, such cases are increasing from 30% as high as 81%. Just yesterday, I posted in the Facebook also, Eva, that one of the women that I know, you know she, she was like tortured by the husband and she committed suicide. She has like two small kids. So there are like a lot of cases happening like that. It's increasing, COVID is like increasing poverty and suffering. So pre-COVID, um, one fourth of the population in Nepal was in poverty. But since COVID started, up to one third of the population is out of work, moving back to the villages and plunge into further poverty. People are literally starving. So there's a, there is a sense of urgency. It, it's extreme. Reed has an important role to play in communities. And whole communities, really. I yeah. Mean, this is the definition of a crisis. And, but I know that you have been hard at work, Sanjana, you and your team. So tell us a little bit um, about how Reed has responded to this worldwide crisis. Our team has come together incredibly well to deal with the issues we all have to deal with at this time. During today's crisis, Reed centers are the lifeline of the local communities, the place local people turn to for information and support. Reed centers and their local partners have long standing relationship of trust and collaboration and now working together to provide needed support. When disaster happens, we usually what we have seen is community libraries are usually the first responders in the communities. So during early stages of COVID, that is before June, we did a lot of relief response work. 
for example, more than um, one, 150,000 masks were provided, more than 50,000 people were reached to educate about COVID and safety. Because the unemployment has stopped, it has hit the basic nutritional need of the people. People are eating half meal and skipping meals, so we were arranging relief packages, relief packages for them. More than 10,000 food rations were distributed. More than 6,000 remote trainings were conducted. So now we are focusing on relief and early recovery work. And our focus in our, is on health, education, livelihood, communication, and awareness on social issues. So what we did on health is, um, you know, the youth of the community libraries are coordinating with the government and with other organizations. They are developing the educational materials in local languages and sharing to the communities. With partnership of the health force, the centers are providing premises in the library to do regular health checkup facilities and immunization to pregnant women and kids. More than 2,000 people has already received health services and assistance. So nutrition is fundamental for good health and development during the early years of life. We all know that. The libraries in partnership with the health force are measuring the kids' growth and nutritional need, working with their families to make sure that kids are having nutritional food. And on education, it has already been like eight, nine months that the schools have been closed. I can help my daughter with studies even if she's at home, but worry about the parents and guardians in, in our communities. Because uh, many people, many parents are illiterate and or you know, they are working desperately to earn money. They are not in position to help the children on studies. But libraries stepped in to help. Before the pandemic, Reed actually had the Tech Age Girl program. It trained more than 470 girls on information technology and leadership. Today, these Tech Agers are helping local children with their studies. They are doing a lot of outreach activities, but obviously maintaining the social distance. Libraries are open with social distancing measure. The ICT section where we have computers and internet, they are being used by teachers and students for the studies. And for the livelihoods, Libraries have started providing interest-free loans to those who are in need and working to create livelihood options for the communities in need. And on communication, you know, we are providing um, continued and most updated and reliable public communication and health information. For example, why and how we use masks, how COVID-19 transmits, what is a social distancing, why it is important. The libraries, they do understand that one size fits all is not going to work. So they are making sure that they are customizing the information according to community context. They are disseminating um, information using relevant formats to a specific group of people in the community so that they can understand the message. And um, on social issues, library have set up the call centers in, in its own premises. They are also getting calls and contacting people um, to ask whether they are, they are doing okay. So if we find any kind of violence, libraries are referring them to the places where they can get help. You know, Sanjana, the need is obviously so great. And I would just like you to take a couple more minutes to address specifically everybody who has chosen to attend this event. I know that they are all the backbone of the work that you do. So please do speak to them directly right now and, and let me know what you'd like to tell them. Okay. Sadly, the COVID crisis only intensifies inequality that are already prevalent in the society. Our read centers will continue their effort to minimize the challenges brought by COVID. This COVID crisis today again reminds us that the faith of everyone on the planet is ultimately linked. We cannot simply isolate ourselves from others anymore. We are moving with times, aware of what is important. The work is timely and relevant, and we need your continued support. Let us rise together. You have supported before. We are very thankful for that. But this time, support and give like never before, because the time is now. And we are working. And we will commit that we will work like never before. We need your support. Well, you have a history of doing so. So there is no reason not to understand that you're going to put in that work now. So thank you so much, Sanjana. <clears throat> Read is such a wonderful organization. And I think I speak for Thanks. everyone when I say, Reed is so lucky to have you at the helm. We know that you're going to achieve wonderful things. Thank you. Thank you. It's now, all your love and support. <laughs> absolutely, always. <laughs> so 
Um, as Sajana mentioned, 2020 has been a challenging year for all of us around the globe. But despite the crisis at this time of year, our communities in South Asia celebrate Tihar or Diwali, depending on what region of the world they're in. Um, things might look a bit different this year, but the belief in the principles of lightness conquering darkness is more relevant than ever. And so we wanted to end this event today by bringing you into one of our communities to celebrate the holiday with us. So in this video, you'll meet a trainer and participant in our Tech Age Girls program. So this program, like Sanjana said, runs in Nepal and India and is a holistic girls leadership program that uses technology training as a platform for girls to build their confidence and 21st century skills and begin to engage as upcoming leaders in their communities through a range of community projects. Take a look. Oh, 
चारू रो बुटे देते तिहार विशेष चार ते विशेष रूप में मनाने गरे इंचा जिसमें थारू बुटे जाती होते हैं ये सुजवा रोटी बनी है यूपी को बोलते हैं सुजवा रोटी को तियो तमराज सौरा और भी बनाया रहते हैं सब यू रोटी को परिकार और भी बनाए इंचा चित्र और भी बनाए इंचा रा तिहार में जाए रमाइल संगा जाए खाई इंचा दिस पची पिस्ते यार माजे स्पेशल रूप में माछा पकार खाने को जिन सब माछा को लगी थी हमने तोरी पिस्सा आने तेज पसी खुर्सानी रलोसुन बना रहे पीछे रहते हैं बनाने का जिन सब माछा को परिकार बनाओ तो हरी से तोरी अने खुर्सानी लोसुन रो अदुआ ले रो पीछे माले सरे अने जिसमें बेसार अने नून आले रो वैसे में माछा लेके मसाले मूछिंग सर अने तेल में हमें संग सोजवा रोटी अन्य हाँस को मासू अन्य नारेनी को मास है तो विशेष तरीके ले पकाए का चाहो रा आज हमें ये खाए रहते तिहार मनाओ देश It's so wonderful to see this kind of celebration, despite everything that is plaguing us these days. And I hope that you are all reminded that light will always win out over darkness. And I want to thank everyone again for joining us this evening. The altruistic beings that you all are is truly what makes this world a better place and what will bring about that light.
Now, we at Reed are all too aware that this is an incredibly challenging time in our history. Some of us have our own struggles, and there are many people vying for our limited resources. But I know that you all wouldn't be here if you didn't already understand the importance of supporting grassroots efforts, and that Reed is not only serving communities that are most in need, but is employing a service model that is the most efficient, the most productive, and the most sustainable. And right now really is the perfect time to give because we have a $100,000 matching grant. So please do look for an email from us. You'll have a digital packet of information and ways to show your support for the rural communities that we serve. Financial support is obviously the most helpful thing for read communities because it gives them the flexibility to respond to contextualized local problems, the ones that Sanjana has highlighted all throughout this program. And again, with a $100,000 matching grant, your money goes that much further. And please everyone do look out for the end of the year campaign as well and pass it along to anyone that you know who might be interested. We really need your help to attract more attention to our cause so that we can continue to build resilience in Reed communities and help sustain Reed's work into this next decade. Now, if you haven't already, please do get updates by signing up for our newsletter and you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you are already a champion for Reed, please do get the word out by sharing our email announcements and help make this season of giving our best yet. Thank you all of you for being here and thank you Sanjana for taking on this charge to lead us into the next decade. Everyone stay safe and well. God bless.